Please welcome to the stage Willy Wonka himself, Christian Borrell, accompanied by songwriter Mark Shaman. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here, and thank you all. Who can take a sunrise? I didn't write this one. Sprinkle it with dew. Hi back there. Cover it in chocolate and a miracle or two. The candy man. Oh, the candy man can. Yes, the candy man can. Cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. The sorrow and collect up all the cream. The candy man. You're gonna sing it with me now? Oh, the candy man can. Oh, right. The candy man. Can. Yes, the candy man can. Cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. That gives it some energy and the world tastes good. Cause the candy man thinks it Thank you for being here. <laughs> Charlie the Chocolate Factory. It's just a gentle rendition, a little out of context. Just enjoy. You are the candy man. Uh, yeah, so please also welcome up to the stage uh, Scott Whitman and executive producer Mark Kaufman. Scott is the co-writer of the lyrics. Yeah. Right. Come on up. How you doing? Nice All right. Hi. You want to join us over here in the, oh. in the oh. big boy chairs? OK. Yeah. All right, I mean, I don't know where to begin. There's a lot to talk about, but we should begin, I guess, with the history of the show itself. Um, there obviously have been two movies made about this. Uh, at what point, I guess, Mark, maybe you can answer this, is uh, where did the idea to turn this into a Broadway musical come from? The idea, actually, we should probably start with Mark and Scott. Um, the idea actually predates me. I started here six years ago, and, we, and I sort of inherited Charlie. Um, but I think the idea of how they came to you guys to do, that Warner Brothers had come to you to do the show. Uh, yeah, eight years ago. Yeah, it's so long ago, I, I actually don't remember. But, um, <laughs> Chocolate hadn't been invented yet. <laughs> <I was. laughs> no, I mean, it always seemed like a great idea to, for the, show, the story to be a musical. And um, they just finally did it. I think Sam Mendes, who directed it and mm -hmm. produced it in England, I think he, he was kind of the... Motive in the yeah, engine. he was the first person we met with. In England? Uh, no, he was in, in America, and he came here, and uh, we had a meeting with him, and we sort of all gelled together. And, and the one thing they said to us at the meeting was like, we do not want any of the songs from the original film. Yeah. Cut to us just opening this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's the way it goes, but, uh, <laughs> which is fine with us, but <laughs> things changed. Well, things evolved. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we did the show in London. We mm -hmm. played for almost four years there. Sam Mendes directed it. And when we brought it over to the US, we sort of, this show evolved and we retooled it. And we, you know, right there, I mean, I think, Mark, you put it this way, that in England, the book was king, and in the U.S., the movie was more mm -hmm, prominent. Yeah. So it, it was also it was, so it was very natural for us to put those songs in. We only had in London, we only had pure imagination, and in New York, we have pure imagination, Candy Man, Oompa Loompa, and I've Got a Golden Ticket. Wow. So usually, when I guess in London, I kind of associated that with like the previews or the workshops or something. But you said it's four years. That's a long time. To yeah, workshop and it was also something. in a theater in London that was twice the size of, of oh. any Broadway house. It was like the biggest theater in the West End. So it really ran eight years in Broadway. Year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
the eight, eight dog years. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, but you said things changed, though. It, making So four years it was set, it, the script was locked, everything was locked in London, and then when it came over to New York, how did that transition happen? Did things get dropped? Or well, hard, well there was a scheduling to, uh, a situation with Sam, and um, so he wasn't able to do it in New York, and so we, uh, they, they, Sam and everyone agreed that Jack O'Brien should now be the director. And we had worked with Jack because we wrote, excuse me, Hairspray. And um, so he, um, <laughs> and so that was sort of uh, like a natural fit for it. And, and Sam, with his blessing, said, I, that's a great idea. And, and we continued from there. Meanwhile, I'm like so. a cat looking at, I'm so amazed that someone is writing this as, as we're saying it. Who, who I'm like a cat. I'm amazed that someone is writing this. Did they cut your mic to make sure that nobody actually knows that that's happening? No, no, don't mention it. That's automatically translated. No, this is live. Is it really? It's a person. Oh, it's a person. It's it a person. is a real yes. person? Well, is it very impressive, whoever that is. Yeah. Oh, it's yes. talented. Yes. The, the cat, for can, the, you type, can you type your name on the screen so that we know who we're dealing with? <laughs> But it's too shy. <laughs> Is that French? I have to not look at it. <laughs> now we, have to, we have to subtitle this for the YouTube, YouTubers at home. Uh, yeah, captioner said too shy. Um, oh, okay, Let's, we can sit here and watch this all day. Uh, <laughs> So the, obviously the history, original history, Roald Dahl wrote this a long, long time ago. Um, and then Jack O'Brien, three-time Tony winner. We got you know, Mark and Scott, the two of you have got numerous credits out the wazoo. Um, the choreography, Joshua uh, Bergasi, you know, one, Tony winner for On the Town. And then we've got now Christian Borel attached, two-time Tony winner as well. <laughs> lots and that feels lots, good. Lots and lots of talent, yes. Uh, how, did, how did you get involved? Uh, we worked together on the TV show Smash and had a blast together. Thank you very much. And um, over those years, they were still writing songs and writing demos for the show, and they very sweetly asked me to come in and sing a few for them. I did a whole bunch of Yeah, so, I, so he was actually the first person to sing any of Willie's songs, even before London. So we would just really? say, Christian, will you come over and sing this demo? It was a demo. Yeah. I was so happy to do it and thrilled. And nowhere in the back of my mind did I actually think that this would ever come to fruition. I mean, you can daydream and everything. We did. Well, that's sweet. <laughs> I'm glad it worked out. And that was it. We had a blast. We it always said it. Fun if, the whole time. We can't get anyone else. <laughs> 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 but when, when, like, we were on, when we worked on Smash, we would make up, we would write songs for him all the time, even though he wasn't really supposed to be singing and dancing in it. But we kept uh, creating situations where he wouldn't. So uh, thank you for that. Oh, I'm glad. I love that. That's funny. I I love uh, Mark. Mark and Scott, your um, both of your credits are are super long. I'm saying, I lo Mark, I love in your bio that you said you you've received an igot. Not an EGOT. Egged. An egged, yes. Um, He's inching em towards it. Emmy, Grammy, yes. Tony, no Oscar. <laughs> yeah. Five nominations, and as Scott likes to say, lost everyone. Yeah. Lost everyone. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite wow, credit. You got a real kick out of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, wanted, I wanted to depart from Charlie for a second. My favorite credit of yours is definitely South Park, Bigger, Longer, Uncut. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yes, he, he wrote the music for that. <laughs> Once more applause. Yeah. Once more applause. <laughs> I co wrote. The music and lyrics with the genius Trey Parker. Yes, yes. Um, Christian, I'm going to go back to you for a second here. Yes. Uh, so you were working with them on Smash. Is, it, is just the, who they, the two of them, who they are, is that what attracted you to want to participate in this? I mean, you're doing demos for fun, but then you never thought it would be something. No, very much so. I think more, the idea, the, the times that I've been happiest working in this business, uh, the times that I've chosen to work with specific with people as opposed to uh, properties or shows or I ideas or characters. And I just knew I would be in great hands, and especially when Jack O'Brien came on board. And you've been so sweet to me the whole time. It's just been, it's more important to me that the environment is good as mm -hmm. opposed to like, you never know how a show's gonna end up. It turns out that everyone's happy and loving it, and I, it's one of my favorite things I've ever done, and I get to be Bugs Bunny eight times a week, basically, at times. <laughs> um, so it's turned out fantastic. But if you gravitate towards people that you love and respect, no matter what the, the end product is, you know it's going to be good. Yeah, we like to say it's all about the hang. 
<laughs> yes, but it's which true. is kind of probably like working here, right? Is it sort of about the hang of it? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, people in manager training they tell you, you like people leave managers, people don't leave teams. Right, right. So you will stay because you have a great manager. It's kind of the same. Yeah, it's true. same thing here. Yeah, yeah but it's also I mean, just to add, um, Christian. It's everybody sees what's in front of the, you know on the stage, behind the scenes. Also, Christian is a force backstage with the cast because when I mean, they're doing eight shows a week, the same show, it's nice to have somebody that sort of brings the cast together and keeps them happy. And we do our part, you know, stopping by and doing everything, but it comes from the top, and Christian is a great inside sort of force to keep the cast very happy. Hmm. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there have always, we mentioned uh, there's obviously been a couple Wonkas before you. There's Gene Wilder and Johnny Depp. Did you purposely leave them out of your character development, or did you incorporate them into your version of Wonka? No, I, I did intentionally not look at them f uh, since the last time I saw them. I saw the Johnny Depp one when it first came out, and I thought he had this bizarre gonzo take that uh, didn't resonate with me at all. And I'm a big Johnny Depp fan, but it, it was a big swing, and for me, it was a miss, mm -hmm. to be honest. And of course, Gene Wilder is a sweet, sweet genius. Um, and I couldn't even come close to touching him. But the thing that I thought about with Gene Wilder was his, just his simple humanity. Like he, he shone through that role in, as he did in every other role. And so I thought, I took from him that Willy Wonka should actually at the end of the day be a human being, mm -hmm. a recognizable human being for all his eccentricities. But I did spend a little bit of time in the process trying not to do them. And then we figured out who Willy Wonka was and it's, uh, Bugs Bunny. <laughs> yeah, Bugs Bunny. Basically. Yeah. We have Warner Brothers sitting on stage. We can, uh, we can say Bugs Bunny. Um, yeah, and I, there was one quote uh, that's written on the outside of the, of the theater that I love. Um, there's a banner that says that gloriously demented Christian Borel as Willy Wonka. Uh, what did you think about that? Is that a compliment? Or you, I mean, yeah. obviously. Oh, yeah. I hope so. It's on the undersling. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I do take it as a compliment. That's great. I guess Bugs Bunny's a little bit demented as well, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, I guess that's kind of, that's a really good uh, comparison to the Bugs Bunny thing because I was, I was going to bring up later that there's a dark side to Wonka. And you, you touched on it a second too, that Gene Wilder kind of had that, those darker undertones. And Bugs Bunny too, he's always trying to like really hurt the coyote and everybody, um, which I didn't think about till now. But you're uh, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> you just blew my childhood. Go home and have a viewing party. Yeah. <laughs> it holds up. Um, did, did do you think about any of that, that in, throughout the story? I mean, I'm giving things away for nobody who's seen Willy Wonka, but like these kids meet tragic ends, and you're just like, meh, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you just go on. Is that like the secret of how the candy's made? Is that is that the? <laughs> well, there is a little Augustus in every bit of fudge now. Isn't there? Yeah. Like, moving forward, we kind of gloss over that. Well, that's what I was. That's what I was saying. No, I think he's still. You know, he is on some levels uh, a madman only because he's been alone for the last forty years with mm -hmm. balloompas and sugar. But he gives every single child fair warning. It's just blatant. You know, disclaimers. Do not do this. And then if they do it, then I guess there's a piece of him that's like, yeah. But the good, but the good ones rewarded in the end. Yeah. The good, the the, the, uh, the sweet spirit. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he wins. We were a little worried that the audience, you know, very protective parents, would say, "How dare you make my kids see what happens to, for instance, Veruca Salt?" Not one complaint, and all the kids are just like, <laughs> "Yeah, they yeah. love it," you know. So, is it? Is it different to to have a show? Is this the first show that, uh, that any of you have done that have had so many kids? It, it appeals, I guess, to the widest range of audience that has kids in there. And even in there, in the opening announcement, it says, we encourage you to eat your candies and have lots of fun. And like you're getting all these audience members who are a tiny on a sugar rush to sit there for two hours. I think for us, it's a beautiful responsibility that we realized from the first preview on of like, oh my god, we are the first musical. Yes, yeah, for right. some of these kids, like these kids. there was a mother who came oh, in with her son, and she was uh, he was really really little, and she said, "This is a, a uh, this is a program, and this is who the names of the actors are." I oh. mean, it was his first, and I of course burst into tears. And <laughs> yeah, it's so gorgeous. I yeah, when I'm joking about the experience, I'll say to people, well, "I got to go put on plaid green pants and entertain for <laughs> a couple of hours." <laughs> like a clown, but what has been so heartening and encouraging and wonderful, and I think it's a testament to the material, um, 
they're so well behaved and absolutely riveted. There's not any of the cliche that you would think of children being in the audience yeah. of acting out. And there's no talking. There's no running up and down the. I mean, they are all on a sugar rush too. That is true. <laughs> but they're so focused and engaged from the very beginning. Huh. And if I can just brief spoiler, near the end of the show, Charlie is left alone on stage. He's been told not oh, to yeah. do something. And I'd say 90% of the time, as Charlie kind of is tempted to kind of touch what he shouldn't touch, uh, the kids in the audience just start, you can hear them go, no, no, Charlie, no, no, no. <laughs> and that's a welcome response as right. opposed to kids crying. And but that's not to say there's a lot of candy for adults in it as well. <laughs> no, that's absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> no, it has that thing that I think everyone likes is that it works on two, but two levels. Yeah. yeah, It's like the Bugs Bunny cartoons. The jokes you know, mm -hmm. hit an adult one way and hit the kids another yeah, way. That's right. Again, back, back to Bugs Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to go back. Mark, uh, Mark Shaman and Scott, like between you, like I still want to toot your horns a little bit more. Um, City Slickers, When Harry Met Sally, Sister Act, A Few Good Men, those are some of the films that, that's that uh, Mark has composed for, yeah. And then, uh, Scott, you've done, you've directed, you were, you're directing Catch Me If You Can on Broadway, you've done Smash, you're now involved with Mary Poppins Returns, starring Emily Blunt and her theater's very own Lin-Manuel Miranda. Um, you've got all this experience to draw from. Same question that I gave to Christian. Uh, the previous Wonka's, and I guess adding in your previous career experience, how do you approach everything how did you approach this from a new perspective? Well, we went to the book, obviously. We st it all started with the book. And um, in the beginning, we, the, we, there were many executors of the doll estate that we've been through. But it, it all began with the book and his wordplay. And, uh, and, and also, I, I think <clears throat> what's really fascinating about the book is that he, Roald Dahl was at, had probably experienced the most tragedy in his life when he wrote the book, his son had been hit by a cab and was in a coma, and his daughter had one died from measles. And so, but he wrote this whimsy. So I thought, well, this is such a wonderful lesson to learn that the art survives, and who really knows that now, that mm -hmm. part of the story. But we did go, we did start with the book and and um, and, and begin there. But much so, to our shock, in the last eight years, we've now worked tire tirelessly on. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and then we're right into Mary Poppins Returns. So we don't have an ounce of whimsy left in it. <laughs> <laughs> and my inner child has been beaten to death. <laughs> Do you get, what was the first song you guys wrote for this? Do you remember? Um, Is it something one that's still not, in not in the show. Oh, yeah. We, we wanted the show to start like train spotting, where the, all the townspeople are singing. <laughs> they're oh, jonesing for day, chocolate. And they're all getting online for the candy store, and then she doesn't open the as she usually does every morning, and they start to freak Get out. To free. And there was a song called uh, Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth! <laughs> that was bizarre and strange. Like, it was like train spotting, a musical train spotting. But the, mute, the British people just yeah. looked at us. I mean, we sent that in, and the people were like, <laughs> No. <they> just, <laughs> it would have been fabulous. It was the quintessential British reaction. Brilliant. <laughs> Can you guys start working on train spotting the musical now yes. that I have the haircut for it? Yes. yes. Wow. <laughs> So you, you shaved your head, obviously. I sure did. Yep. You put on you put on a wig, the old guy wig. That's funny. Um, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the reaction the wig got on the show. So really? I'm throwing my hair out. Anyway. Brilliant. <laughs> um, I want to I want to get the B-roll footage queued up here. Uh, the because I'm going to get you guys to play, um, so give some examples of the songs you've written for the, the Golden Ticket winners. I want to call them kids, but I put kids in air quotes because they're played by not kids. Um, all the Golden Ticket winners, Golden Ticket winners, um, the 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 songs themselves, the choreography, the acting. I mean, the characters are all great. They're, it's kind of bigger than life. So I want to get the audience set here. Let's roll the footage. Oh, oh, we're watching. Yes, we're going to watch a video. And now we get to that. Childhood wishes. You can even eat the dishes. Who can take tomorrow? Who can take tomorrow? Dip it in a dream. Dip it in a dream. Separate the sorrow and collect up all the cream. The candy man. The candy man. Oh, the candy man can. the sky, at the stars and planets passing by, if the boys 
like me, he'll want to fly into the stratosphere. And as we both rise into those skies, your future see the view from here. B-roll. <laughs> the B-roll. <laughs> it looks so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> the B-roll had the built-in applause. Um, yes, yeah, so I wanted. I hope all you guys noticed the individual kids, and, and, but the the songs. Each one of them comes out to almost a, a showstopper of a number, and uh, I was hoping like you give us a little taste of of some of that now. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Boy, you are a live wire. Here, this is Augustus Gloop. His mother just sang a verse in a chorus, and then he sings this. <laughs> like my mother and my father, I enjoy a healthy meal. Yes, my outside's soft and flabby, but my inside's made of steel. We raise piggies in the backyard, then I eat them limb from limb. And so this morning I was eating when such hunger did attack And fifty vodka bars were waiting for a nice mid-breakfast snack But the taste was kind of different, like a bratwurst three days old So I spit it out and saw I had struck gold So now I'm the perfect ticket winner for our chocolate I did teeth I'm excited but keep eating cause I only stop to breathe And a lifetime full of chocolates like a is a gesundheit from above And there'll be more, more, more of me to love Boy, we're gonna have to really fix that in post <laughs> I play too hard for this microphone <laughs> His lyrics are better <laughs> Or hers Oh, or, yeah. Ooh, oh that's right His, his or hers um, And it, <laughs> I don't know where to start with this. Uh, <laughs> you obviously have to, you're thinking in character, the the individual songs are very specific to the, the individual characters. Um, and then the one of the missing characters that we haven't yet brought up, of course, are the Oompa Loompas, um, which was not, if I remember correctly, was not in the original movie, uh, the story, but it was in the book, the story of how Wonka met right. the Oompa Loompas, right? And there's a whole song about this, Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> so it's weird for me to sing it when you've got Christian sitting right here. <laughs> but uh, uh, maybe you'd help me on the chorus, at least. Sure, we both will. Yes, yeah. that's a yeah. wonder. Yeah. Oh, hold on, let's grab the other mic then. <laughs> there's a wow. great story. There's back. a great story in the book that the second movie did really well of, of him going into the jungle and finding the Oompa And we basically just musicalized this whole chapter, uh, we just made it rhyme. Um, oh wait, how do I? But we I took ahead. out the racist element that the book used to have. Yes, <laughs> and we don't bring that up. By the way, <laughs> yes. where am I? Uh, when will he? <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna be the Oompa Loompas, and you're gonna be Willie. I guess. Yes, yeah, sure. that works well. Let's well, well, so, um, <laughs> fun. It's fun. It's just I, like a deep I was searching the dark green jungle for a tree called the Theobroma. Like a sweet Margaret Mead, I let my nose lead to its heavenly chocolate aroma. But the jungle was filled with snozwangers, horn swagglers, and wicked vang doodles who would make you their lunch as their as your bones they would crunch while they boiled your lips for noodles but no wretched beast would make me their feast for my sword is as swift as lightning one by one they all fell though the ooze and the smell they emitted was twice as frightening and then high in the trees I heard foreign whoopies then the source of the sound were all there on the ground barely up to my knee they all screamed we're all free and the sound of their bliss it went something like this Oompa Loompa Loompa Oompa Loompa wanna No, no, no Ay, 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 ay Oompa Loompa wanna Choo, choo, choo Gesundheit Thank you Oh, Loompa 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 Mic drop? I can sit on it 
If you, all right, you can keep. That feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Back there. Sure. Um, the Oompa Loompas. Are we allowed to talk about this yeah. in public? We can, yeah. Sure. We just can't show anything. Right, really? I know, because I was going to comment that the Oompa are not in the B-roll. That's very specific. No, they're the, they're the treat when you come in. Right, the yeah. right. They, I don't know what I want to, uh, you guys need to go well, see Well, we hired, we, I mean, we brought in this genius grant winner, Basil Twist, to come up with a concept for the Oompa And he came up with something that, the idea was to sort of hide in plain sight. So where you, you without giving anything away, because I'm being very careful not to give anything away, you were in on the, on the joke from the beginning. So you were right. in on exactly how they do it. So you're not seeing they're spending the whole song going, how do they do that and not concentrating on the song? So the minute you see it, you know exactly what's going on. And that's what that allows you to hear the song as it's meant to be. Right. And it's performed. It's a lesson kind of brilliant. we learned from England. Because in England, we tried to hide it. And then, oh, really? Yeah. And then people were spending the whole numbers thinking about, how did they do that? How did they do that? Yeah. 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 So you can see everyone, the ensemble, their full face, but the Oompa Loompas are this tall. Now you're giving too much away. <laughs> <laughs> Edit it all out. And it's, it's alchemy, alchemy. Yes, yes, it's very funny. Um, gosh, I want to keep talking about it, but I know we can't. No, it's, I mean, uh, look, it, it's really fun. And it, again, it's one of the treats. And there are a lot of treats, but it's one of those individual treats that you really witness. Yeah. It's one of those things you want to see well, live. I think that uh, I'm, I'm safe to say, I think, we did a workshop of oh. the show uh, about a half year to a year ago for about a month, and part of it was putting together this Oompa Loompa idea, and it was mm -hmm. the most bare bones version of it. And we could tell that it was like delightful, but when we had like people come in with fresh eyes, and just in like a fluorescently lit room, with you know everyone in rehearsal clothes and just the bare bones mock up of what this thing is, you could see. Well, I was watching the faces of everybody, and I just thought, yeah. oh, that works. That's works. <laughs> just yeah. it's pure delight. That's funny. Yeah, Mark, do you want to play anything else for us, or do you want to come back and join the rest of the crowd? I, well, or I, uh, we yeah, Caroline. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh. <laughs> Transition music. <laughs> uh, so the, obviously in the B-roll, everybody here saw the saw the set, saw the, uh, just, I mean, the costumes and stuff are actually absolutely amazing. Um, so the set has to be phenomenal because it is Willy Wonka. It is this can this mysterious place, um, but it can't steal the show. So were you? I mean, Mark, um, were you involved with like the set design? And and obviously things have changed from London to New York. Well, in, in London, Sam, it's, it, again, this is about the director's vision. Mm -hmm. So in, and Mark Thompson did the set in London and also did the set in New York. He also did the costumes in London and New York. But while Sam had one vision of the show, Jack O'Brien had a different vision. And Jack was much more reliant on pure imagination mm -hmm. and on allowing the audience to sort of fill the blanks and allowing you to focus on the characters and, and the songs. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it, it's, it, they're just completely different sets. And it's, it's just a matter of allowing you to, to imagine what the factory would be and mm. giving you those hints that, that sort of build on it. And it's, to me, it's quite wonderful. Oh, yeah, I agree. And I guess what's, what's sticking out for me is that the show didn't move. It seems like it's actually two completely different productions, uh, one in London and one in New York. <laughs> they, I mean, they yeah. were. I mean, again. But like, like uh, Scott said, we were in the biggest theater in London. Mm -hmm. We couldn't take that set and put it in any theater in New York. The, the Met, maybe at the Met. Right. Mm -hmm. kind of Truthfully. Yeah. Yeah. Which is tough to get a run, yeah. more run there. Um, <laughs> wow. yeah. So they were just, uh, and again, so it was redesigned with this in mind. And Jack, again, had a very specific vision that he worked out with Mark Thompson, and that's mm -hmm. what we see there. And then the set, the set decoration actually extends to outside the theater as well. So as you're standing in line, uh, you've got inner, things you can interact with. And there's the Oompa Loompa door, which is yay big, you know, that you can come in. Um, a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Go see it. <laughs> <laughs> the casting, let's shift gears a little bit. So obviously, we know how Christian got involved. Um, so the casting of the rest of the cast and the ensemble, was that, uh, did any of the four of you have any uh, influence on that? Well, you guys did because oh, yeah. of the people who were in the very first reading. Yeah, the there were some people who were in a very first reading. Um, uh, Jackie Hoffman, mm -hmm. who was Mrs. TV, and, and Kathy Fitzgerald, who was Mrs. Kloop. They were in the very, very first reading six years, seven years ago. So, and they, they're, now they're playing the parts on Broadway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we love them. The, the whole cast is really funny. Yeah. Really, really it's funny people. A, a lot of oddballs, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, <laughs> I dare say you have just as good or 
more better time backstage <laughs> than you do on stage. I mean, this cast is just really funny people. and uh, They're wonderful. And so it's just a joy, and rehearsals were jo a joy to find out people you didn't even know were as funny as they are. Like, and then there are three wonderful kids oh, that are in the God. middle of this. F they're oddly all named Ryan. <laughs> There's three boys that play Charlie, and they're, uh, they're also running up and down the halls and stuff and spreading with that kind of energy. It's but so funny to watch, like Christian was giving them some comedy timing <laughs> lessons <laughs> during tech rehearsals. It was so sweet to watch these kids being like, OK. All right, I hold for two beats, and then they just, yeah. you know, there's a certain thing <coughs> that it's so nice to work with someone like Christian who can pass along that kind of stuff. Although these kids are all naturals, and eventually they would have come to those conclusions themselves, but what They've a now been trained so well that each one of them comes out on stage at the beginning at Places Call, and there's a small gaggle of people who start off the show on stage, crew and a couple of actors, and now each Charlie will come out on stage and at some point say, Got to move. <laughs> just music to my ears. There's also something about having three sweet kids backstage in the cast, because the theater is like a kooky, crazy work environment that can be a little loosey-goosey, you know. And to see everyone take care of these boys is one of my favorite parts mm -hmm. of this job. Because you have to, you know, you realize that you are forming young minds and you also have to be a little more respectful and a little bit more aware of the way, the way you behave. Because, you know, the theater, you're changing backstage, you're throwing your clothes off and, you know, the humor gets a little blue. But out of respect for these kids, everyone is on their, their sweetest, mm. uh, most respectful behavior and it sets the tone backstage as well. It's great. Was it hard to, to find all of them? To these three are actually all making their Broadway, or, or made their right. Broadway debut in the show. And they're right. all not, like, the, they're not theater kids. Like, it's not the, oh, I saw him in Kinky Boots. Mm -hmm. I saw him. Yeah. They're, these, are, these kids are really fresh, and I think that's also part of their charm is that they're, they're, they're just raw hmm. and, mm -hmm. and lovely, each one of them. It's interesting, this, this particular genre of musical, uh, because it's one of those that I think has... It's gone from TV to to theater or to stage, which is the more standard route. But then there's this also, uh, like Christian, you were in Sound of Music Live. Mm -hmm. There was um, a couple other in the cast that were in some of the other live productions that NBC has been doing regularly now every year. Uh, do you find that that going one way to the other is is easier? Like, or do you prefer do you prefer live theater? Period. Or yeah, yes. Full stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just personally, you know, I like walking to work. I like routine. I like doing eight shows a week. I like uh, the instant gratification of doing something that's happening in the moment mm -hmm. with thousands of people in the room. So even with your, well, even with a live broadcast of a of something nationally, that's still unacceptable. Amazing, and no, that's <laughs> so fun. Those those things are a blast to do because you get the whole. Well, first there's the TV paycheck. Then there's the whole, <laughs> no, no. You get the rehearsal process, which is one of my favorite parts of this whole thing that we do. And you bond with this group of people, and you're creating something. And then the kind of hard part about those is you're doing these rehearsals for the camera. And you're getting the timing, and you know, if you're know you capturing it and rehearsing it. And then you actually do it, and it's exactly the same as the rehearsals that you've been doing. There's no, like, Laughter. response or yeah. you're doing it in a void and then everyone has their opinion about it at home and then you leave after that last show and it's just done after all that hard work you don't even get a run out of it hmm. which is where the, we find the fun you know right, now right. that we're months into Charlie we're still finding fine-tuning and it's now a well-oiled machine um, but I wouldn't trade it for the world I like doing it all Okay. Whatever they'll let me do. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Uh, we have two mics in the aisles. If anybody has questions, uh, start lining up. Ask them anything. Um, and settle down. <laughs> Don't cause a stampede. <laughs> <laughs> it takes them a while to warm up. I, that's why I prime them. I prime them with the, with the, with the getting ready. Um, wait. Wait oh, for no, it. Wait he's for leaving. It. Uh, no, he's walking. walking. Uh -oh. Oh, I, had, wait. Oh. I had more questions, but now we've delayed long enough. Uh, yes, over here. Okay, so first I want to say that I saw it, and it's awesome and amazing. Thank you. Um, but one of the questions I had while watching it is, why aren't the other kids actual kids? That's my question. 
Um, That's good, though. It all works well, we had, we had real kids, little kids in, in the UK. There were, we had hundreds of them, thousands. <laughs> there were five kids for every part. So it was like running a preschool. But, <laughs> but, it, but we find that the, that the, the, um, the our songs and the, and the humor is uh, is hard to put over when you're a child, but but when you're an adult, when you're sort of a millennial funny comedy, you know, gift guy, you can really d push the stuff out. And also, this makes Charlie stick out more. That's he, the most important. That's the most important that's, yeah. real reason is that Charlie becomes the only child, and so um, he's the. He's the, he's the you know the good good at heart. And I think there's a piece too where we can be more malevolent with the kids and torture them yeah, in a way that's more apart appropriate and, if they're being yeah, played yeah, by adults. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's funny when it's played by adults. But I don't know how funny it would be if these kids were actually children. Yeah. And by the way, they're not. They're of a certain age. It never actually says that so and so is nine or so and so. They're within that. You know, they're playing within that age, so it does vary. And though it might not have been for you, a lot of people, I'm almost surprised, don't realize that they're, they're as adult as they are. Yeah. Huh. A few people have been really shocked to be told, no, that, well, I won't want to say how old she don't, is. Don't, don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, they just become like this version of kids with quotes around them a, a bit. And it just makes it more fun for us. And also, as Scott said, it was so hard to put on the show with all these kids. You had to tech the show every single for each kid over and over again. So the rehearsal process was and they endless. grew they grew fast and they really grew oh my fast. god our the Augustus in England he his voice he didn't even make it to his, the opening yeah, no he, guys, he came he left on Friday hi I'm, I'm Augustus and on Monday I am Augustus <laughs> <laughs> so I said the best thing we could do is at least can I at least give him a porno tape <laughs> you know, there's a good thing that's coming from what's you know. <laughs> He was heartbroken. I, I still have a dream that Violet and Veruca will someday be played by Harvey Firestein and Brooke Sashman. <laughs> okay. That's what I really want to see. <laughs> That's that uh, casting thing where they do the what's the, what's the show that they do where they forbidden Broadway. No, not forbidden, but the one where they do parts they're not supposed to play. Oh, a, a miscast. Miscast. Oh yes, someday. So it's probably more and more. Thank you for your question. <laughs> yes, over here. When you're performing on Broadway, of course, there's all the lights in your face and the audience is dark. How much do you actually get feedback from the audience during the show, or is it more just from show to show you start accumulating some feedback from the audience? Uh, it's funny. It, it's night to night is different, obviously, and it's uh, you can in a matinee at a kiddie show, you're, some of the adult jokes aren't going to go over as big as, uh, you know, on a Saturday night. But the, the real fun with this company is I can't see anything um, looking out. And plus, I construct an incredibly strong fourth wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. But I can't. It's, it's, so it's like it's a void out there. But you can hear and sense and feel it. Um, and one of my favorite things that has happened with the show is as we've all gotten to know each other as a troop, that... There are moments where the audience, it moves so fast in the second act that the audience needs moments to breathe and laugh and actually settle down. And we've all collectively found these ways to kind of like tickle out certain moments. That can, you have to be careful because you don't want to become whorish about it. But it, that's the real fun of like finding the exact right moments where you can like play the audience like an orchestra. And uh, after Veruca's demise, yes, which is so thing, yeah. like shocking and horrific, they ha they need a moment. You can f sense that they need to kind of like settle down and like, did that just happen? And then they're ready to laugh again. And so if we play our cards right, I can stand there frozen in shock, and then I can get them going with a blink or like a tilt of the head or an eyebrow raise, and then they start to go. And then Ben Crawford has just this perfect yeah, line great. that caps it. Which and they gets explode. a huge laugh, God. And that's the fun, when all the ingredients are right and all the focus is in the right place. Um, so it's, it's playing them like a fiddle. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm being used, it's wonderful. <laughs> yes. yes. Hi, thanks for being here. Christian, you're also one of our favorite Broadway actors in our household. We've gone to see a lot of Broadway shows together, so thank Thanks. you. Um, also, I love the show. I, I saw it a few weeks ago, and I've always loved the concept of, you know, see something that isn't there, making something out of nothing. And there's a lot of tech also in the show that 
shows the audience something that isn't there, and it's kind of a creative uh, take on it. But it's also a nice balance. It's a nice blend of it. It enhances it, and it's different than a lot of other shows. Um, and you mentioned there's a lot of kids that go to see it. There's really audiences of all ages in there. So what do you want um, the younger generations and families that are going to see it, what do you hope those conversations are afterwards and um, inspiring people to, to go and create in real life and mm. you know that kind of conversation? Can you please write for the New York Times? <laughs> wow. I think first and foremost, what I wish kids would take away is looking at Charlie as an example of what type of person to be, and that like actually being a kind, honest, and decent kid will get you uh, the the grand prize in the end. Um, and there's also a lot of, there, there's so much in the show. It's, I think it's a lost cause at this point, which breaks my heart. But the, the lesson about um, how much time we spend on our screens. Mm -hmm. Because um, Mike TV has now been expanded into a kid that has like an iPad on a lanyard and his iPhone, and he's, he's just like screen obsessed, as Mike so TV many kids are. Mike TV has a few are. interpretations, I think. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. So that maybe like, take a moment to come and sit in a theater instead of whipping out your iPad. Like, that's an option. Cool. And maybe this generation But won't. yes, imagination is really the thing I hope they talk about mm -hmm. you know, when they leave, yeah. Thank you. You said Thank good, you. thanks. Have you received any other sort of, I mean, along, I guess along those lines, have you received any other sort of audience feedback that stands out, maybe like coming out of the cast door the stage door at, at night, someone stopped you. I left like, the stage door one night and someone said, oh, Grandpa Joe, you were so good. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm old enough, but he's, he's really old on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were saying? Oh, no, I'm, I was trying to play them with a blink. <laughs> um, yeah, Grandpa Joe is the original Pippin from yes. Yes. John Rubenstein. John Rubenstein. Rubenstein. Yeah, Rubenstein. amazing. Um, a lot, a lot there. When you when you were saying playing like a fiddle, I always I hearken back to the multiple times I saw Peter in the Starcatcher, yeah. where, you, where you when Captain Hook finally loses his hand. Yes. That scene. Every time I saw it, it got it was like five minutes and then ten minutes and then fifteen minutes. Well, long. that's a hyperbole. But <laughs> yeah. Maybe one minute. Yeah. It was a long bit of laughter. <laughs> Question. Yeah, my question is for uh, Mark and Scott. I'm just interested to know what your creative process is like. Do you guys say, hey, we're going to sit in a room and like we've got to bang out this song? Or is it like you get a creative inspiration and you send an email and like, hey, this is sort of the theme I was thinking about. How do you generally work together? Um, we sit in a room together. And um, I, I tend to be the one who does a lot of research. It takes me, I have to do a lot before I get in the room. And, and then, I can't read or write. So. <laughs> <laughs> it all <balance. laughs> Some perfect team. <laughs> so we do. We do st st sit in a room, and 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 be because um, we've been so busy, and we have to. You have to have something on paper every day at the end of the day, no, no matter how bad or how great it is. So um, so that then and the next day you can go back and say, oh, this is terrible, or oh, that word is great, you know. <clears throat> but I tend to to work on. I have a big piece of butch, uh, butcher's paper. And I write words down that I think the character would say, and then um, or phrases, the, uh, phrases, or the vocabulary of the people that were writing the char uh, characters for. I mean, Scott's intent on trying to come up with the title with all those phrases and words, trying to figure out the title so that that title sums up, you know, what we're about to write. But we have all these choices, and then I go and listen to all his choices, and we start phrase association. And so he's writing on the butcher paper, and I'm writing on, on the computer. And then I just get all those phrases there, and I scotch tape it up to the piano. And I just sit, and he then he just goes, monkey, play. <laughs> and, uh, and just whatever phrase pops out, <laughs> yeah. you know. And hairspray was so easy, you know. Hey, Mama, welcome to the 60s. It was like, well, that's one. You know, they, they, so this was a little harder, because the wordplay is so the vocabulary is, right. is, is so different. And know. then we just keep chipping away at it and try to make it better and better and, and better. And then we call Christian. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing that we do care about greatly is perfect rhymes and mm. you know, syllables, despite my horrible performances of them. I mean, you know, <laughs> making sure syllables hit on the right kind mm -hmm. of music. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's a part of the craft that has become a little less important 
but for us, it's it's of utmost importance. Because that's how you land the joke always is the is when you like there's a lyric in the show where he says uh, Charlie says. Um, uh, the, 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 they say, uh, off to bed now, and he says, I'm counting sheep. And then the grandparents say, hope we don't die in our sleep. So that's a big laugh in the show, but it's only because, and they laugh before they actually hear the word sleep because they know the rhyme is coming. So that's, a, that's the greatest joy you get when an audience laughs at a lyric. And, and, so. and it's a gift, too, that you give actors, is the, the way that you scan everything and that your diligence about it. There's never that horrible thing of having to massage right. you know, emphasis in a word or try. It's thank you for that. You're welcome. Pronounced emphasis, in case you're <laughs> correct. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Emphasis on the right syllable. Mm. You've obviously known each other. Uh, Mark and Scott, especially for many, many years, and then all of you have worked together on Smash for you know however long ago. And that we did hairspray, spray with, you know, I did hairspray, hairspray with, with hairspray, yeah, hairspray and Smash and everything. And we've um, been mutual Batman fans for decades. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> where Where do you all see yourselves twenty years from now? Thirty years. How from many now? years? Uh, twenty. <laughs> twenty. I'll be out of here. <laughs> 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 Won't we all? <laughs> wow. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. We have, a movie, oh, wow. we have a movie coming out in 2018, so I guess I'll, we'll be around for that. Mary Poppins yeah. Returns, yeah. yes. No, yes. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Well, okay, well, one year from now, we'll settle. <laughs> okay. I mean, All right. I, yeah. I mean, I just, I mean, I love working with these guys, and I would do 100 things with them. I, all three of them, I think they're all wonderful. So, yeah. I mean, no, where I'd like to be uh, is like, Doing more shows with that. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. That's it. All right, we've got one more question here. Hi, thank you guys for being here. Sure. Hairspray is like I know every word. It's my favorite, favorite, favorite. Thank you. Love it. Love the song. I just wanted to ask. I think it's a really interesting time on Broadway. There's some like really modern stories being told, like Dear Evan Hansen and Come From Away, Sunset Boulevard, Hello Dolly, more classic. You guys are sort of in between. What are some of the projects right now or shows that you guys love or you're excited about and uh, that you look to for inspiration? Um, wow. Playing now or recently? Just curious. Well, we are the types. I mean, we go to see Hello, Dolly, and just oh, weep, that, weep that from I wept beginning at. to end yeah. because of the yeah. glory of musical comedy yeah. and that kind of staging and the sets and the costumes and everyone's performance. So that's where our heart lies. Mm -hmm. And um, we love everything else that is happening, but we know where our... Uh, yeah, what's Sweet the, spot. Yes. And so, so um, I forgot what, what I was saying. Um, you know, love it all, but uh, it, we're very lucky that we keep getting asked to do projects that do fit into our, you know, we're writing a movie musical that's going to take place in the 50s about the, how industrials started, where it used to be. They used to, for companies like Google, they would have... Um, big Broadway musicals written about the company to f raise the morale of the people who worked at the company. This used to be a big thing for 20 years or so. So we're writing a musical that takes place in the 50s. Hmm. We have another one that I'm not allowed to announce yet. That will be a kind of late 20s, early 30s. So we're happy. And Mary Poppins Returns takes place in the 30s. And they're all adults, like with complicated feelings. And, uh... <laughs> 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 well, cool. Uh, everybody, please go see the show. CharlieOnBroadway.com. Don't forget our, our ticket discount internally. Um, Instagram and Twitter, at CharlieOnBWay. If you've taken any pictures tonight or today, hashtag it, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. They're at the Lundfontein Theater, 205 West 46, <coughs> between 8th Ave and Broadway. Uh, please help me thank them. And then we're going to get one more performance. Sure. Christian, please. Sure. <laughs> The lower key. All right. um, <laughs> bye, guys. We didn't write this one either, <laughs> but uh, it's a true classic. Come with me, and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look. And you'll see into your imagination We'll begin with a spin Traveling in a world of my creation 
function What we'll see will defy explanation Simply look around and view it Anything you want to do it Want to change the world There's nothing to it There is no life I know To compare with pure imagination Living there If you truly wish to be by Menem. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. That's fun. Thank you.